Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Dr. Gerald Ozier, and this is Simply Cyber Live, where we engage with industry professionals to share their knowledge and experiences with you. Today's episode is nothing short of exceptional. We have the privilege of hosting a trend center, very hardworking, and really awesome cyber professional, Mr. Jason Haddix. As the founder and CEO of Arcanum Information Security, Jason brings high quality cybersecurity consulting and training to bear on the market, all while solidifying his reputation as a leading hacker and trainer in our industry. Jason's professional journey is marked by significant accomplishments, including spearheading the global security team at Ubisoft, where he led initiatives across corporate security, apps and infrastructure, and even game security, which I hope we get to talk a little bit about later. This role saw him managing everything from privacy and compliance to anti-piracy measures, anti-cheat systems, ensuring that Ubisoft remained at the cutting edge of security practices. Moreover, Jason's influence extended through his work with Bug Crowd, where as VP of Trust and Security, he was instrumental in pioneering crowdsourced security so solutions. His leadership and strategic guidance helped Bug Crowd and its customers navigate the complexities of bug bounties and disclosure programs, and it really made a lasting impact on the cybersecurity landscape. And in addition to all these corporate accomplishments, as if he didn't already have a million things going on, Jason is known for his bug bounty work and his contributions to the industry through his highly praised and open sourced, I might add, bug hunters methodology. I'll show you that a little bit later uh, with links to it. So whether you're a seasoned professional or you're just a newcomer who kind of stumbled in here and you're trying to check it out, prepare to be inspired by the insights and the stories of one of the most influential figures in our field. Everybody who's a squad member, drop your Oprah emotes in chat. Say what's up. If you have any questions, put a cue in front of it, and I will get them in front of Jason as quickly as I possibly can. We are in for an absolute banger of a show. So come together and let's welcome to Simply Cyber Live, Mr. Jason Haddix. Let's go. Well, let me hold on. Let me do the stinger. Where, why is there? We go. Hold on. All right, here we go. So Jason, occasionally we have real time issues and it's actually a hallmark of Simply Cyber to have, like I went live this morning and there was like no audio or video and I'm just like screaming <laughs> at the microphone. So having, I gotta tell you, having a flaw in the stream already is a good sign. It actually means oh, yeah. we're on brand. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, um, you know, it's a thing with like content creation or like whenever you're on a video, like I know it's going to be a good one when I get put on my back foot for a second, because uh, you know then it's it's really vulnerable and honest, like it's nice. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, you do make a lot of content. I mean, do you have any like uh, stories that come to mind right away of like, oops, or you know, just kind of a mistake or a flaw or something? You know, not especially with my my like YouTube videos or anything like that. I just really started to get back into YouTube, but um, but I do have a funny story. I was working for Bug Crowd at one point. Um, and we had a morning internal call at one point, and um, I was already late to it. I had I had accidentally slept in. The alarm didn't go off, and so I am calling in on my phone, you know, over Zoom, and trying to make sure I join it before I get downstairs to the computer and can get on, you know, video. Of course, you know, you roll out of bed, no pants, right? So I'm running down the stairs with my phone. And I had it turned down, and my boss at the time is Jason. Please turn your phone up, oh, and away. And I'm like, oh, what's going? On? I had the camera on, of course. So, uh, <laughs> so that was uh, that was pretty embarrassing, but also a really funny story. Never lived it down at Bug Crowd, so yeah. Oh my God, yeah, that's that's definitely one of those ones that follows you around. You're lucky you didn't get like a nickname, like no no pants Jason or something. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 we're good. I think uh, I think everybody was uh, too nice for that at Bug Crowd. So yeah, yeah. that's funny. <laughs> Well, so yeah. you just mentioned that you're starting to get back into uh, YouTube. So uh, you have a million different initiatives. I'm going to bring your YouTube channel up right now, mm -hmm. and I'll drop a link in this uh, for chat for everybody. But what 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 are you doing with your YouTube channel? Why are you getting back into it, and what can people expect? Yeah, absolutely. So um, so basically, I started up kind of a newsletter first. And what was happening with my newsletter is um, I was doing like small little micro topics and. Uh, my newsletter is called Executive Offense. It kind of plays in this world where it's uh, offensive security people who have turned into leaders and they want to know kind of what the what's what is on, you know, some offensive security topics, how to address it as a leader, et cetera. And so I was starting to hit these topics and I was like, well, I know all these people in the industry. I should just interview them and add it to the newsletter. And um, so I started interviewing people 
and it just became really, really good content. So I was like, well, I'll just push it on, um, I'll just push it on YouTube and kind of rekindle my YouTube. And then um, upcoming this year, if any of the listeners or anybody um, has like seen any of my work before, I, I do this, you know, two series of talks. It's the Bug Hunters Methodology Recon Edition and the Bug Hunters Methodology Application Analysis Edition. I've done them. I've done them on a whole bunch of other conferences, but never on my own page. So I'm going to do an ultimate version on my own page. And it's it's really like one third of my paid training you can get for free by just visiting these videos on the internet. And I'll talk about reconnaissance and application hacking. Um, but I've just been really enjoying interviewing people, honestly. So uh, one of my first interviews was Joe Margolis. You can see him right there. He's a world-renowned mobile hacker and mobile okay. pen tester. And then after that, I've been doing a ton of AI stuff. And I met, uh, I had the privilege to meet um, Sander uh, from learnprompting.org. And that was a fantastic interview talking about AI red teaming, uh, hacking AI, you know, some of the misconceptions about prompt engineering. It was amazing. So I've just been having a really good time just interviewing people and having discussions. So, yeah. You know, it's funny you say that. I feel like, because I've been in the YouTube game for a few years now, too. And I feel you see people say the I'm walking away from YouTube, you know, the, I'm quitting YouTube, those kind of videos. And it always seems to be aligned with like losing the joy of yeah. you know wanting to make the content so it sounds like you you know you just didn't have time but uh the content's going to be coming now because it's it's content that you're going to be enjoying making which really does com uh, come through in the video too i feel like you can tell when someone's not enjoying <laughs> oh yeah for sure yeah yeah i don't ever want youtube to be my like you know like my paycheck or anything like that i'd rather just put out good content and if people enjoy it they do it and um, you know, that's the same way I feel about the conference scene too, right? Like a lot of us who speak on the conference scene to give away methodology and tips and tricks and stuff like that, you know, we pay for that ourselves. We travel to all the security conferences ourselves. You know, you pay the plane ticket in the hotel, but uh, the community is what keeps me going. Like I love going to cons. I love teaching. I love speaking. Um, I love dropping new secrets uh, just like everybody else does. So yeah, that's cool. That is cool. So if you do have any questions for Jason, we're going to be jumping all over the place. It is a fireside chat. So just drop them in there. Mods, if you can help me out by uh, scooping them up and dropping them in mod chat so I can see them fairly easy, I would appreciate that. Uh, you did mention cons just a minute ago, Jason. I mean, we're about to enter. It feels like, to me, it's like it's like <laughs> con season, right? Like, yeah. you know, spring and then it, it, it kind of finishes up around, for me, uh, Wild West Hack and Fest in that space. But what, what cons do you have on your uh, radar for 2024? Yeah, so um, the first one I'll be heading out to is HackspaceCon in Florida. Um, oh, so that's like next week, isn't it? Or a couple weeks? Yeah, yeah, it's a couple weeks. Um, heading out to HackspaceCon. Going to be giving a talk on um, offensive security uh, for red teams and AI, uh, red teaming AI stuff. And so that'll be pretty cool. Um, after that, I head immediately to Singapore for um, Black Hat Asia. So I'm speaking at the CISO Summit there. And I'm talking about AI again, but from a kind of GRC, you know, point of view. Woo! I'm always yeah. trying to make GRC cool, Jason. Yeah, so I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> well, and before the show, we were we were talking about it. it's like the the compliance and the leadership jobs sometimes in security are harder than just the hacking jobs, right? Yeah. Like or the incident response jobs. It's it's um it's just it's just a really hard, delicate balance to strike to be a leader of a whole bunch of really cool people and then also um you know like have all that business acumen and be able to build the right program and invest in the right places and then lead the ship when it's on fire so yeah absolutely 100 <laughs> yeah. percent. so yeah. well i want to know more uh about cons you're going to but i am yeah. kind of curious i do know some people uh who will kind of like be for lack of a better term have like their 2024 conference deck where like you know they're going to do the same conference uh talk everywhere they go already you've said two different talks so i mean are you kind of a bespoke talk uh type professional yeah i have i usually have four or five different research streams i call them so even in my browser i have these little folders right and they're all research streams of things that i think are cool and if i think they're cool enough then i'll start submitting them as talks all over the place mm -hmm. And so this year, it's obviously AI uh, using AI for security. And then um, red teaming and credential operations is my newest one. And then the bug hunters methodology is an ongoing. It's been ongoing for like six years now. But yeah. um, every year, it's highly updated to the newest tools and techniques for bug hunters. So um, yeah, so those are kind of the main ones I'm doing. And then um, I am going to be at Day of Security, which is um, a women in cyber focus conference 
And um, that is in April. And that one I'm doing kind of a special workshop for them. Um, there's two, there's one that's, um, there's one that's AI. And then there's also one that I've helped develop, which is um, interception proxies for AppSec people. So Burp Suite, Zap, mm -hmm. if you've ever wanted to be an AppSec person, how to use those tools. Um, so, so yeah, that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, after that, uh, you know, I think we'll both prop maybe be around B sides SF and RSA, or, or I don't know if you're going to be out there. Or... I won't be at RSA this year. It falls on my uh, my my eight year old's ninth birthday. Oh, so no. you know, oh, yeah. family is very. I mean, I work my tail off just like you do, oh, but yeah. family is you know very important to me. So yeah, I had to take a pass on that. Yep. And then uh, you know we have virtually Naham Khan, a, a mutual you know uh, Ben, a mutual friend of ours, uh, going to be speaking at his con. And um, and then we head into you know DefCon and Black Hat time, which is that's my home. That's uh, that's my crew. That's my home. I present there. I'm on the board of a whole bunch of villages. It's going to be crazy. Um, I'm supposed to do a hot tub stream, I guess. So we'll see how that goes. Is that going to be on Twitch? Isn't that like what Twitch yeah. does? <laughs> yeah, that's what Twitch does. Yeah. So <laughs> that's awesome. I will tell you again. Uh, we were talking about this before the stream went live. Um, you know, I'm not. Uh, I'm I'm not offensive, <laughs> you know. I'm not offensive professionally speaking, uh, but I do, I do love everything about our field. So I I do make efforts to get educated and contribute in that space. And I actually uh, spent a lot of time at Red Team Village last year, and I appreciated yep. um, the panel with uh, instead of having a keynote, kind of a keynote panel with Ben and and John. And um, I never I've never met uh, or heard of Ryan before. Uh, okay. Zero day or whatever. Yeah. So, I don't know. Does he go by zero day or O day? Did do you know? I think he says O day, but uh, okay. Well, yeah. I don't want to look like a poser where I'm like, hey, no, no, what's up, okay. zero day? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, I just it was really nice to uh, get in there and immerse with that community and yeah. um, just even even when it was uh, DEF CON, like when it was virtual for uh, COVID, like yeah. you Red Team Village had like the best virtual conference. Um, oh, it was tremendous. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm on the board for the Red Team Village this year, or the like the steering committee, whatever you want to call it. So we're the CFP just went out um, a couple like a week and a half ago. We're starting to look at talks that are coming through. I think this year, what's special about the Red Team Village is um, for the last couple of years, we have been focused on workshops, mm -hmm. which are really nice, but also have a limited amount of you know kind of participation, first come first serve, or first in line at DEF CON. And uh, this year, we all we have two sections. We'll have workshops. And talks are back this year, so micro talks, and um, so th we'll have a lot of amazing content coming out of the Red Team Village. Super excited about it. I'm particular for those who don't know, DefCon has historically been held in like a bunch of different places, like like in Vegas, but it'll be like Red Team Village is like in a building 25 minutes away from Blue Team Village and stuff. And this year they're doing it at a conference center, I guess, or whatever. So I'm actually, I, did you guys already get like? Uh, layout of where you are and what what kind of resources you're going to have at your disposal yeah we're one of the biggest villages so we have um we have quite a bit of space for the red team village um but if you've ever been to a convention center you know in la or las vegas right it, it's kind of a big strip um that you have and then you know there's big you know portions for the vendor area and then there's you know, upstairs and downstairs, and each one will have like different size rooms. So um, we're just starting to, to figure it out right now. I think uh, this will be much different, right? So, you know, at DEF CON and PASS, we've been in hotels, separated mm -hmm. hotels where you'd have to exit the hotel and then walk over to the next part, mm -hmm. um, go outside and stuff like that. This is actually all enclosed um, this year. And it's, you know, the official convention center is actually pretty massive too. So um, I'm hoping for the best, you know, uh, but uh, you know, you never know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. It's DefCon's always a crazy, crazy trip. So yeah, yeah. I, I'm excited for it. I, I always enjoy it uh, personally. Yeah. Uh, we got a question coming in from Keith Sloan. Keith wants to know, Jason, what do you suggest as a learning path for a security enthusiast, but with no clear goal on where he wants to go? You know, it's always like, oh, I want to work in cyber. Well, what do you want to do? So yeah, what do you say to someone who's not quite sure what they want to do yet? I mean, you know, I'm an offensive guy. Most of even my leadership experience has been guided by offensive security. So I think the toe that you can dip into offensive security these days, there's a lot of free resources that you can go after. But if if offense, you know, uh, is your fancy, uh, I think one of the best free resources out there to learn web hacking, which I would say, you know, you can start with pretty easily as long as you know websites and you can get a little um, 
you can read a little HTML or something like that, maybe some JavaScript, is uh, WebSec Academy by Portswicker. Mm -hmm. um, yep. It is a free resource and probably the best thing to come out um, in the last you know five six years in the you know the training community as far as free resources go. So when we when we were in uh, you know when I was in, a baby hacker, we used to read the book, um, the Web Hackers Handbook, which was written by Daffod Stuttered and um, and Marcus Pinto. And so we would train out of this book. And then when it came to the conversation for Marcus and uh, Daffod to decide whether they were going to do a third version of the book, they decided against it. And then um, Daffod basically made that site, the, um, the Web Security Academy. So that's why it's all free, because it's kind of like the third version of the book that they put out and it's got live labs and it's it's really good so yeah and i was just showing it on stream if you were wondering what we were looking at i mean there's there's labs and cross-site scripting sql injection yeah. kind of like OWASP top 10 and then right up in your alley uh i saw that they've they've just added web llm attacks in here yeah. as well so yeah. uh pretty gnarly yeah it's pretty good and it's all it's all free too so um and then if you if you are a visual learner if you don't want to just go along with the text learning along with the labs. Um, Rana Khalili does an excellent video uh, series on solving those labs at your own speed. And so that's that's what I would say. I would say, you know, like um, give web hacking a shot, do some of those labs. You can put that on your resume too when you finish it. Just say, hey, I finished all of the WebSec academies. And that's a really great place to start. Um, and then you might find out that you don't want to do offensive security or you want to do something else. But even having that on your resume is like kind of an amazing thing because you know, as you and I know, these days, you, you're not just one thing anymore, right? Your mm -hmm. your offense, your defense, your purple, your, you know, like you're trying to do everything and everybody wants a well all rounded person or all around person. And so, you know, it'll, it'll look good anyway. So. I love it. Jason wants to know, and, and Chris Weaver, I see your question. That's a great question. I'm going to be bringing that up in a hot minute here. Uh, Jason wants to know any tips for someone with web dev JavaScript experience who wants to use that to break into AppSec since you're talking about kind of, you know, AppSec. No prior work experience. Uh, well, Jason, I would say, well, first of all, great name. Um, <laughs> and uh, second of all, I would say that you're really well poised, right? So um, I think what the security industry needs a lot more of is developers who move into security rather than security people who are expected to learn developments. And so um, if you're already a developer, you know, and you already know a lot of the modern JavaScript frameworks, you know, to be a specialist, um, in web you know just take one of the frameworks you really really know and start looking up okay well how do i secure this and you might already know all that you might know all the functions that could be vulnerable and all the vulnerabilities that that type of framework you know has and architecture flaws and all that kind of stuff but take that and rebrand yourself as you know a secure person for that um that technology and you'll you will be surprised how fast you get picked up now um you'll need to you'll need to fall into some research and you know if you don't have that kind of body of uh, knowledge yet but it's all out there on the internet and um you know let's say for just fictitious example you're you know a node expert right i mean like i swear if you rebrand yourself as like a node secure coding expert or a node architect security architecture position um you know there's people looking for those skill sets all over the place so it's easier to learn security as a developer than it is for sometimes for a security person to learn development so yeah I love it. So we're going to bring up another question, but before I do, I want to ask Jason a question because it's going to it's going to lead into uh, this this really great question. Sure. So Jason, you are you know working, making content, doing all these things, but you're also a trainer, and you train your own curriculum live, and you keep it up to date, and it's phenomenal. I'm I'm actually looking forward to taking it. But what is it? I'm going to bring it up while I bring it, but can you kind of tell people about your particular course that you've been doing uh, really well? lately sure sure so my flagship course is called the bug hunters methodology live so for about 10 years i've been giving this talk um called the bug hunters methodology and what happened was it got too big to be a conference talk anymore um it was like uh it was going on one hour just for the recon section and then i added all of this application hacking experience and tips and tricks to it and um it got too big for a two-hour talk which meant that it was too big for most workshops so uh, I decided to take a portion of it and really, really build it out into a two-day training. Um, and what's special about my talks is that 
it is fantastically up to date, right? So I'm a bug bounty hunter. I will never leave the offensive security scene ever. Um, and so the tooling, the methodology, it's it's real, real high speed stuff for um, for people. And I break it down so that newbies can parse this type of information and really bridge a gap that I feel like is not covered by a lot of other places, right? From, you know, you can get from zero to maybe 20% with a lot of trainings. I want to get someone from zero to like 80 percentile in, you know, in web hacking and reconnaissance. So, um, so yeah, so that's kind of how it came to be. And uh, we do it four times a year. It's live only. Um, you come for two days and I just dump my brain into the students. <laughs> and it's, it's very similar to kind of like your chat, right? Very active. We have every time I do the training, it is completely different in some portions because I answer questions live and we go down these crazy rabbit holes of, you know, bug bounty hunting and red teaming and, you know, like stories from my career, you know, people want to know like how to get their foot in the door, like all kinds of stuff. So um, every time I do it, it ends up being a little bit different and uh, it's, it's pretty amazing because if you come take the course, then anytime you want to come back to the once of four times I do it a year, it's only a hundred dollars and you can come back. Um, oh, that's awesome. Again. That's like such yeah. a bonus too. Yeah. I, I'm excited. Uh, Jason and I were talking about it. I've never really been able to take it because uh, traditionally it's fallen on the weekends. Yeah. And I said, you know, I just, with my family and, and kind of the way I, I compartmentalize my life, I can't do it. And he's like, oh, that's perfect. Cause June 26th and June 27th is a Wednesday, Thursday that I'm doing it next. How about that? So I will be in this class, I'll be in the next version of Bug Hunters Methodology Live uh, in June 26th, 27th. If anyone's interested in cohorting with me on it, uh, I'm particularly very excited uh, oh, about gonna this. It's going to be a blast. Season. It's going to be awesome. I've, I've actually had a taste of it. So I don't know if you remember. I know you you do a million things. So um, And at the DEF CON Red Team Village, that was the COVID year, mm -hmm. you gave a talk. And I think it was it was like basically a prequel to this yes. course being developed because yeah. you did a live bug hunt on Office Max. Yes, and it did. Yeah. Do you remember? Okay. I yeah. Do, yeah. So yeah. The, like the TLDR is Jason goes all the way and then it was like, oh, and had to like hide his screen because he, <laughs> he went all the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, sometimes we do... You know, you can get into demoing um, a, bug, a bug bounty or, you know, a target, and then you actually fall into a vulnerability like live on screen. So yeah. um, it it is a little uh, spicy. That year was particularly fun. There was a lot of cool stuff going on, and the virtual community was really cool. So, yeah, that one was really cool. If you think of that and what I did at the Red Team Village, I think I spent four hours at the Red Team Village doing what I call a workshop for that. And um, now you can think, take that and times it by you know, six or eight or 10, maybe, because the the course is, is just like fantastical. And what really also is another cool thing is that um, the students, uh, we built a Discord community around it too. So, um, so everybody who's taken it is in this Discord, this private Discord, and people are submitting scripts and tools to make my methods better or, you know, sharing their methods and that oh, gets wow. put back into the course. And it's really been uh, a magical, magical thing to, to watch. So I love it. So, you know, just to kind of like uh, riff off that, you know, it used to be the information security kind of used to be toxic and there used to be a lot of like, like, oh, like haves and have nots or like, you, you know, you haven't made your bones or whatever. And I yeah. feel like that's been kind of rooted out and like we see it with the Simply Cyber community, Black Hills' community is incredibly yeah. supportive. And it sounds like, you know, even your Discord that you're talking oh, yeah. about uh, represents that. It's just really, it's really hopeful and promising for the future of the cybersecurity industry. Yeah, I mean, I think that, I think that when I was coming up and I was younger, there was a lot of that kind of um, cowboy, cowgirl mentality where it's just like, I'm going to go it alone. And what I've done is my body of work and anybody else who you know, like doesn't have my same body of work as a scrub or a script kitty. <laughs> and I actually hate that. I, I hate it with a passion, honestly. Yeah. Um, and now we have so much open source learning. We have so many content creators who are inclusive. Uh, we have a bunch of bunch more cons that you can go and get um, training from or advice from. We have a bunch of media. So yeah, I think I really love where we have landed with, you know, kind of in, in the industry and, um, yeah, I think I made a post one time where I said I hate the word script kitty because I feel like mm -hmm. it it's demeaning, and um, and you definitely saw like the older ver the older generation of hackers was like 
It's like, no, to me, that just means like learning or whatever. And you just like point it. And I was like, yeah, but it's, it also is kind of like hurtful a tiny, a tiny bit, you know? And like, they just didn't get it. And then the new school people were like, yeah, I hate the word script kitty. So like, uh, it was a very divisive Twitter post though, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I, I, I do remember that one. I actually stopped using it um, personally after doing that. There's another, there's another term I stopped using. Um, I can't, I can't remember. I know. Well, just, it's not exactly one-to-one, -one, but like I stopped using shadow IT also. I, I, I now call it unmanaged infrastructure. Um, unmanaged. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, the question, I, the reason I wanted to ask you about bug hunter methodology live is because Chris Weaver, a uh, long time, uh, simply cyber community member. So what's up, Chris? She wanted to know if you're ever going to be creating your own cert. I feel like this would, you know, lend itself. So any, any thoughts on the horizon for you there? Yeah, so we offer a certificate of completion with the course, so people know that you've taken, you know, kind of one of the the better, you know, courses in the scene. Um, but to get a cert recognized for like the purposes that a lot of people want it to be recognized for, to get you past the HR firewall and you know and that kind of stuff, um, you know, we're not there yet. I've only been I've only been doing the course for about a year now. So um, hopefully someday though, yes, I will do like a live cyber range that people can use the skills on and have them write a report and then, um, you know, and then certify that they have both the skills and the acumen, you know, available, and maybe that'll be recognized. But that's probably like a next year plan, I think. Right now, I'm just trying to make sure that the methodology and, you know, that kind of stuff gets out there, so. Yeah, and I, I've you know been following. I don't know if you follow what Heath Adams and Cyber Mentor has been oh, doing, yeah. but you yeah. know he, you kind of, he's very open and transparent. So like watching him kind of get PNPT as a certification, and then going into the government space, then coming back out of the government space because of yeah <laughs> the obligate the requirements they had. Yeah, it, it's so funny we're talking about like you know training and and kind of the training landscape because I just one of my newsletters today in executive offense was about the training landscape, and so. Um, I have a tremendous amount of respect uh, for what it's become and the players in it. I see a lot of people asking about some of the players like Hack the Box and Try Hack Me. Um, they were both featured today, as well as Offsec. Offsec is a gold, you know, is a kind of gold standard for certification wise. Um, and then, and then one of the next issues we're going to be talking about, um, we're going to be talking about uh, TCM and um, anti siphon and 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 like. The narrative, I'll give it away. I'll, like I'll bury the lead a little bit, but um, or I'm not going to bury the lead, but yeah. Uh, basically, is that you know right now we're in a golden age of training. I feel oh, like, yeah. um, and we're having practitioners who are really, really, really good um, start to make training, and Oops. and that's that's Heath, right? Heath was an individual practitioner, and then he was like, okay, well, I'm going to teach this stuff with my spin on it, my point of view, and now it's become something amazing. And uh, Anti-Siphon is a collection of individual trainers, right, who uh, they go to John and they say, hey, I have this idea for this amazing course, or Anti-Siphon goes to them and say, hey, this is this is a really you know piece of dope content. And then they go through Anti-Siphon to deliver it. But, you know, like I am taking so many, my, my, my personal training budget is just like, you know, the out of the roof right now. It's, it's, it's out of control, but um, I love, I love it because before you really only had a couple options, um, and now we have so many options. So it's very cool. Yeah, I, I love it. Um, I think, I mean, on top of it, it's like not just educators, but like they're they're open in the community, they're engaging in the community. I mean, like you're here right now, engaging with you know whatever, like a hundred people live in chat. So it's it's there's it's not the whole concept of this like ivory tower and you know, you go away and come back with knowledge and like, you, you kind of don't talk about how you got it. It's like, that's, that's just completely broken down. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I'm a hundred percent with you on that. I'm trying, trying to make simply like simply cyber is on a mission to make GRC cool. Uh, it's we're not doing yeah. it. So <laughs> maybe just socially well, acceptable is what I'm working on right now. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you've sat in the leader seat, like you and I have, right. There's very yeah. few people who have sat in that seat. You realize how important GRC is. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. I love it. Uh, Zach's not bored. Wants to know. Talking about offensive security and OSCP. Do you think the red team certs like OSCP look good on someone in infosec looking to stay on blue? Yes, absolutely. I think a well-rounded individual uh, is always sexy, for lack of a better term, in the mm -hmm. industry. Uh, so adding development to your, you know, blue team, adding red team to your blue team resume is is, you know, is really awesome. Um, you know, it can be used as one of those leverage points. One of my one of my talks last year at the CISO summit was, you know, how to leverage what you've done in order to, 
you know, kind of weather the bad storm of what was layoffs and, um, you know, and stints where we might not have great salary increases and stuff like that. And so one of the things I talked about is being really, really well-rounded, right? Make yourself indispensable. And that's the kind of stuff you can do to make yourself indispensable. Yeah, that's a great point. And and uh, I'd also argue like, you know, again, I haven't done, oh my God, my dog, my dog, I'm sorry. My dog thinks that he eats dinner at this exact time. They have like an internal uh, tag. Now he's, he's like shredding my leg off camera. Come on, get off. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, you're more effective as a blue teamer if you understand how the red teamer oh, yeah. would come in and vice 100%. versa, right? Like you can, yeah. you can yeah. circumvent controls if you understand where they are. So yeah. definitely value in there. Yeah. Uh, Chuck, my man, Chuck, I love Chuck. Uh, Chuck, uh, he said, given the abundance of the resources today, like you mentioned, we live in the golden age right now. Do you think self-learning was more beneficial in the past when resources were scarce? Do you think so? so my answer to you, Chuck, is that is that no, I actually don't think this, although it is, it is somewhat of a divisive um, conversation right now. I think it's how you present your skill set, right? And so what I tell people, I have another course, I've only run it a couple of times, it's called Hack Your Brand. And we talk a lot about this specific question. And um, the thing is, is that you have to think of yourself like an artist, right? Where you have a portfolio and a body of work that people can review. And so, you know, all of this free resources is, is, is great. And you can have it on a one line on your resume. Uh, and that's just how everybody else does it. But um, you can craft your own website with your own body of work and present it however you want, right? And so, you know, um, you could have your CVEs on there. You can have all of the free training. You can have what the tr free training taught you. You can have your body of work, right? And so that's actually one of the things we walk through is like how to make a proper portfolio domain for yourself to show your body of work and really sell yourself. And that's a skill set not a lot of people, they don't go that far, right? They'll, they'll put it on their LinkedIn. Maybe they'll have some trainings on their resume, but they might run out of space on the resume or something like that. So I think it's about presentation. I think you can build a great, great presentation of your body of work and then do a bunch of free stuff and it can look fantastic. I mean, I've had some students who did all of the free training that was available on uh, WebSec Academy, but then talk a lot about the vulnerabilities, how it taught them to do stuff, and then you know how it led to them finding maybe some CVEs or some bounties on world-class companies. And I got I to gotta tell you, when I look at a resume these days, if I see somebody who has some CVEs and who has participated in Bug Bounty and found some bugs, um, I mean, that's the job, right? So I know they can do the job. Yeah, no, I love it. This is all great content. Uh, I want to, I'm going to keep jumping around a little bit to different yeah, types of questions. No so we're not focused on just one topic, but uh, waiting through logs who you may know he's over at Black Hills. Um, how do you deal with burnout? I mean, it's it's a real thing. And I'm actually super pumped that like mental health is like very much a uh, a topic now that's being openly discussed. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, what do you do? We all got our own, you know, solution. So I am not the best person to talk to about burnout, honestly. I am, uh, I am voracious when it comes to creating content um, and doing research. Like, I dedicate every every two hours a night to do AI research for this new course I'm building, and um, and that's just like hard blocked on my calendar. And I'm going to conferences and speaking, and so you know I do burn out every once in a while. I think that um, I think that you know I just make sure to take big chunks of time off. Uh, I'm I operate like a roller coaster, right? So uh, most of the time. I am, you know, up at the peak of the roller coaster and going a million miles an hour. And then sometimes I do burn out and I can real I can self-realize it and be like, okay, cool. We're gonna take some time off and chill and uh, take a family vacation, go to Disneyland or whatever, or maybe just hibernate, you know. So um, but I don't do a very good job at it, honestly, and and I wish I did a better job. I wish I had a better answer. Oh, that's I mean, that's good. I mean, it sounds like you really enjoy work. So maybe that's like therapeutic, it, you know, the actual working. Um, so, you know, again, kind of jumping around here, uh, Andrew wants to know what goes into developing a course. It's a good question. It's a very good question. Cause it's deceptively more difficult yeah. than you would think. Yeah. So, um, basically I do a ton of research on what the day to day looks like for the average student, um, who's going to take the course. So for, with the bug hunters methodology, it's bug bounty hunters and red teamers, um, and web application assessment people. Uh, so AppSec or whatever their role, whatever their title is. 
And I sit down and I look at their day to day and I'm like, okay, what is that 40% juice that they're not getting anywhere else? And then I dive into those things. And so, you know, for instance, one of the things that we just added to the course because um, I did that was we added a two and a half hour module on um, JavaScript analysis because most common web apps these days are JavaScript front ends that have vulnerabilities. And in order to black box assess a website, you also really need to know um, how to dissect and decompile or deobfuscate JavaScript and find out where the API calls are, find out where those hidden flags are that can get you like free products. Everything is within the JavaScript these days. And so um, of no other course I had seen had a module on, uh, on JavaScript analysis. So I built one. And boy, was it recepted really well. Like people loved it. And it's, it's probably one of the best pieces of content I've built in last year. So, um, so yeah, I just look at what people do and I try to figure out, you know, what would benefit them. And luckily in the offensive stuff, like I'm a specialist too. I'm bounty hunting all the time. So, yeah. I love it. Uh, yeah. So, you know, not just the actual tactical pieces of building the course, but actually looking at, you know, who, like, who would the course serve and is it worth the time yeah. and energy? So yeah. speaking of courses, you just launched, well, I mean, you didn't even just launch it, like it launches in May, uh, yeah. is this red, blue, purple AI. I'm going to bring it up. Can you kind of talk about this? Because this thing is... This is, first of all, the artwork's super dope. I'm a huge retro synthwave fan, if you couldn't tell nice. by the lighting scheme. Yeah, and, that's like, great. That, back, that background back there. But uh, this is hot, Jason. Uh, and yeah. I, like, uh, I haven't even gotten to the words yet, and it's already hot. So what are we doing here? <laughs> okay, so um, okay, so a year ago, when I was, or no, a year and a half ago, I was still at Ubisoft. And um, I got invited to speak at this very prestigious closed-door conference. I can't even say what it's about. But... Uh, they were like, can you build some new content? And this was when, uh, this was at the heyday of when GPT 3.5 had just come out from OpenAI. And so I had been messing with it. And I have a Discord of friends who we're just in Discord all the time talking about all this crazy stuff that you can do with generative AI and specifically GPT. And, uh, and we're just kind of like security AI people. And we're in this Discord chatting. And I'm like, I think I'm going to make a, a talk. So I made this talk and I gave it. and I'll be damned if it wasn't the most popular talk I've ever given anywhere. I had at least 40 people come up to me and were like, that was amazing. And so the talk was basically an hour long talk where I talked about application of current gen AI tools. So stuff you guys have right now um, that you could take and build, like basically build yourself superpowers inside of whatever role you're in. And so I broke it down into three you know, three basic sections, um, using generative AI for red teamers, using generative AI for blue teamers, and using generative AI for purple teamers. And so it's so popular, I came back home and I'm like, well, you know, maybe I should start working on something a little bit longer, maybe a workshop or something like that. And then my wife, um, she loves me so much. She's, uh, she's like, hey, you should, you know, now that we're going out on our own, you should make this a class because it's really big. So I've been working on the class for about um, eight months now. And what it does is it takes every domain of cyber. So every red domain, every blue domain, every purple domain. So this is things like assessing things in red, pen testing, red teaming, um, vulnerability scanning, vulnerability management, reporting, all of the sections of your day-to-day -day in red teaming, how to supercharge it with generative AI. And then blue teaming, same thing. How do you supercharge your job with generative AI? And then purple teaming, same thing. And I've even added a new section, which is, I don't even think is in the syllabus yet, but I call it the silver section. And it's using generative AI for leaders and how to supercharge your, your leadership skills using generative AI. And I'm so pumped about this class. I think it's uh, I think it's going to be one of my masterpieces over my career. So I love it. So this is what you become to get known for, because I feel like you're known for your bug hunters methodology. But yeah, uh, it would be impressive for you to usurp that, uh, uh, you know, thing that people know you for with this. But that's awesome. Uh, and the fa I already I dropped a link in chat if you're uh, interested. Uh, and if you're watching this on replay and you don't see the chat, you can just Google Haddix, H-A-D-D-I-X, red, blue, purple AI. And uh, it'll come up. It's, it's on Gumroad right now, but I'm sure I'd have to like. I don't. Do you use Gumroad to deliver it, or is, or is this just the landing no, page? No, it's just a it's just the landing page and the purchasing mechanism. So when you're a trainer, you have to figure out how to effectively sell things in multiple countries. So Gumroad allows me to do that. So um, nice. it's actually everything's delivered. All my courses are delivered over Zoom, uh -huh. um, and they're recorded, and then you get the recording after. So uh, yeah, everything's done over Zoom. 
I love it. So if you're interested in getting superpowers, as Jason put it, uh, do it. I will say, so Jason, um, you know, you put a lot out on Twitter and stuff. Um, I saw a tweet that Jason tweeted or whatever, X'd, like whatever we're doing here. <laughs> yeah. And I guess I'm just going to be an old guy and call it tweet. tweet. Um, and you said that like you use this while you're doing bug hunting. And you said it was basically like having yourself sitting next to you yeah. doing like checking and doing things. So like you almost like two yeah. X yourself. Um, do you yeah. remember that tweet? And can you like elaborate on that? Cause it, it, to me, it was impactful. I was like, Holy crap. Yeah. So, so one of the things that I have been taking a lot of time to study is prompt engineering, which is the art of um, building really, really, really good uh, instructions for the current gen AI that we have most often, you know, most people are going to be using chat GPT. And so um, chat GPT launched, this thing called uh, the ChatGPT store a while back. Yeah. And what they allowed you to do is make your own little bots. And so I built one called SecGPT and I fed it with um, a bunch of institutional knowledge and all of the tips and tricks in the prompt engineering field. And then I started asking it questions during my pen testing and it was fantastic. It it really helps me every day. You know, I can give you some examples of, yeah. you know, like uh, the JavaScript stuff. So, you know, the first thing I'll do is uh, when I hit a site, there's like, you know, a checklist of things I want to do when I hit any site that I'm going to hack and the JavaScript takes the most time. So I was like, well, how can I, how can I do this a little bit better? So I fed a big, large JavaScript file and I asked it, um, I asked a sec GPT to basically, uh, I was like, hey, parse this, everything that you can unencode or, um, or you know about, you know, the unencoded, you know, end result of. Tell me about. Build all of the API paths for me with curl requests, so I can check to see if they have authentication imply, applied. Uh, tell me all of the vulnerable versions of functions that they might be using in the front end Java code, which could lead to cross site scripting. Um, and so I built that into the persona. I didn't ask that GP. I actually built it into the persona, which is called the system instruction. And then I asked it to tell me about the JavaScript. And um, it just spit out everything I need. Like it, it gave me all of the curl requests, all the paths. Uh, it even told me that there were some secrets hard coded in this JavaScript and what type of secret it was. Um, and so I've been using it pretty much on every assessment that I do. Um, it is, it wow. is fantastic. So I had to change the name though, um, because OpenAI doesn't like you calling tools GPT. So now I think it's called the uh, Arcanum Cybersecurity Bot. I just changed the name last week, but you can you can Google it and find it on the store, um, the GPT store. And I wanted to make sure that I wasn't just blowing smoke up my own, you know what? Mm -hmm. And so uh, I gave it to all my pen tester friends, and they were like, "Yeah, this this really works. This has helped me a lot." So um, so yeah, I created a monster, and I continue to iterate on it, and uh, that's kind of another part of the course. So. Um, the red, blue, paper, purple AI course, I teach you exactly, and I show it to you. I show the source code and the prompt engineering for that bot, and I show you how to do it yourself as well, uh, build your own bots and what goes into building a world-class bot. I think right now, um, the cybersecurity bot for Arcanum is probably, it's at least within the first, it's within the top 100 in research, I think right now on Ooh. the GPT store. So, yeah. Dude, everything you touch is awesome, Jason. Like, you know, you obviously have a, a pension for wanting to do quality work, but it's, it's impressive, uh, obviously. Um, so congratulations. Good on Thanks. you. I, I like, so you'll use this. If you, we take the training in June, the bug hunter uh, methodology live course, you will use this bot. I will use the bot. I uh, I don't show the source code to the bot or the prompt engineering. Um, in oh, the yeah, red blue, between, yeah, yeah, in the red blue purple AI one, I will show um, what goes into making it and all the prompt engineering. But yeah, I I do spend um, quite quite a bit of time using the bot in the live class, and it's you know if you have a GPT plus subscription too, it's free for anybody to use. So yeah. Oh well, there you go. If you if you're using it, and you want to check this out. If you're a pen tester, um, it sounds like it's pen tester approved. By the way. Um, I love the um, giving this bot to a bunch of pen testers. Like that's a true test. Like, I mean, you know, if it was, I mean, you obviously probably had a feeling that it was probably legit, but like, you know, you were going to find out pretty quick if this thing was uh, uh, got a problem. Did you get any yeah. good, like constructive feedback, like to improve? Oh it? yeah. Yeah, for sure. So I, um, I definitely got some feedback on, uh, so, so who, one of my best friends is Daniel Meisler. 
And he's oh, also yeah. a specialist in AI and, M and ML right now in the intersection of security. And so, um, you know, I was always talking about Dan with, you know, like how it's working and, you know, what we could do better. And, you know, there's some, there is a, you know, if you're into this depth of it, there is archive.org, which basically this is the place where all of the research gets dropped, all the research papers and academic papers gets dropped about um, a whole bunch of topics, but specifically where a lot of the LLM and natural language processing white papers went. And so uh, one of the ones that, you know, you can find there, which isn't common knowledge, is that uh, basically you when you train bots to do specific functions, uh, like this is a cybersecurity bot, uh, training it on how to answer questions effectively in a true manner. Uh, you know, a lot of people use what's called single shot prompting, which is just, you know, giving it a persona and then asking a question. But if you, inside of the system instruction, if you give it up to 10 examples of how you want it to respond and at the technicality level that you need it to respond, it over 150 X is the effectiveness of the bot. Okay. Um, and I found that out via a research paper by some people who did it at Stanford and they, they benchmarked bots that had been prompted like that. Um, so yeah, that's awesome. That's really good. Uh, good information to know. And, uh, I want to say what's up. I saw Leo Nunez in chat. He's an OSCP guy and, uh, nice. offensive security professional. So he might find that cybersecurity bot on the chat GPT store, particularly valuable. Um, dude, the, the questions are coming in like hotter and heavier than, than I can even possibly manage. Yeah. Um, which is awesome. Uh, Gary wants to know, uh, do you have a mentor? Did you ever have a mentor? Like, what, you know, what are those interactions like? I mean, you're at the top of the mountain right now, Jason. So, you know, how, how is the mentorship trail? Um, so, yeah, I've had a, I've had a couple people who really contributed to kind of my, um, my education. I would say that uh, very early on, um, I met a, uh, a man named Joe McRae, who was uh, building AppSec stuff. Um, and uh, Joe ran uh, a company doing training. And he really gave me a chance uh, as far as um, basically, you know, some pen testing stuff. He put me on some engagements. Um, so Joe was a mentor of mine for a while. Uh, Dan has always been best friend and mentor. So Dan Meisler. Mm -hmm. um, and he's, you know, him and I have just like always been thick as thieves. Um, but honestly, a lot of it, I, you know, I struggled on my own to teach myself a lot of stuff. So um you know, like, I think I got lucky in my first job in IT was a night shift job. And so I had a lot of time to do uh, voracious study. <laughs> and, uh, and I did it. And, and then I, I realized that, you know, like, I should write about it. And I started writing. And then um, back then, it was ethicalhacker.net was a forum that we, we were all on. Um, this was, you know, before Twitter even really took off. And so Don Donzel made that forum. And he was uh, somewhat of a mentor to me. And, um, so little people have helped along the way, but, you know, also sometimes you, you count on yourself and your work ethic and, uh, and that has, that has pulled me through a lot as well. So, yeah, you know, I tell people, um, you know, cybersecurity, like I want everybody that wants to work in cybersecurity to work in cybersecurity. Like I will help and show you all the resources, yeah. but, but you tell me if you disagree with this statement, I believe that you have to be a lifelong learner to be successful in cybersecurity, just because there's no one's, you're never going to be an expert in it and really yeah. everything. And it, it just changes so often. And um, it's just, it's just kind of a requirement. So having that kind yeah. of student mindset is, is very valuable. Yes. Yeah. 100%. I, I agree with you. I think also there's a lot of people that miscategorize kind of or like, you know, like I think Simon Sinek did a, a thing on this about mentorship, but really mentorship isn't an ordeal where you connect with someone and then they magically download all this experience uh, in your head, right? Like, and a lot of people think that that's what mentorship is, that you're going to like go to this person. Really, a mentorship is a friend that you, uh, it's a relationship that you build over a long period of time where you can bounce ideas off of each other. Um, and it's a two-way street. And mentorship really doesn't work if it's a one-way street. Someone will get tired from being, you know, the sounding board all the time. Um, and so I think that, you know, like, don't expect anyone to just give you all the answers, right? Like it, it is a self-learning field. And the wonderful thing about cybersecurity is that it is it is a self-learning field. You got to be autodidactic and um, and a learner. But if you can do that, there's nothing standing in your way. Yeah. Uh, there's you know very few of the jobs that if you have the skills will turn you down for not having a um, college degree, 
I don't have a four-year degree. I have uh, a two-year networking degree, a Cisco networking degree, um, which did help me a little bit, but like not too much. It's really all about, can you do the work? Yep. And I think fields like that are fantastic, right? Because, you know, uh, you can go from anyone, you know, I, I worked at a video game store at one point, and I thought that was the pinnacle of my career. And then now I am, you know, world-renowned hacker. And yeah, I put in a lot of a lot of hours to get there, a lot of self-learning. But I don't know many other careers where you can do that, where you can go from no degree all the way up to the very tippy top. So, Yeah. I mean, it, to me, I 100% agree with you. We say this all the time because it's like certs, education, and then practical experience are kind of the three legs of the stool. Mm -hmm. And the practical experience is just so much more valuable. It's, it's, uh, cybersecurity is almost... Or you could make the argument it's like a trade, like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, instead of like kind of a white collar uh, job. Yeah. Um, I, I do want to share this really quick. This is unsupervised learning. This is Dan Meisler's um, newsletter that he puts out. I'm going to drop a link in it. Um, this is the guy Jason just mentioned that they're thick as thieves and good friends. Um, I, I do subscribe to this myself. And it is Dan's Dan's very good. <laughs> Dan's <laughs> very good at what he does. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to drop that in chat for for everybody to consume. Yep. And giddy up on that. Um, let's keep going. Um, just uh, again, chat, you guys are like blowing it up. Uh, we're about a hundred people here just kind of crushing it. Um, so, okay. Chris Weaver, do you ever lose track of time? I mean, when you're bug hunting, <laughs> how, how, yeah, like you got a yeah. story about that. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. I mean, there've been multiple mornings where, you know, I have a window right here and I can see the sun coming up and the light bleeding through the window. Um, because I've I've fallen down some rabbit hole, but uh, hacking is very streaky. And so uh, in offensive security and bug hunting, when you're doing bug bounty, it's like if you're on track, uh, there's several reasons where you might want to finish your trail uh, that you're on. One is you're in that mindset. You're really thinking on all cylinders, even though you're tired, you might want to finish. Um, sometimes you're at the end of the course of where you need to submit that bug or write it up. And then there's also this very real fear in uh, in researching and bug bounty, that someone else will find the bug before you submit it. Even you know, in your so you're battling against time as well, and other researchers as a competitive component to it. Um, and so yeah, so all of these things play into uh, bug bounty and uh, red teaming. And so you know, I'll I'll push it to the end, and then luckily I have the flexibility in my life where I can you know cancel my meetings in the morning and say, hey, I'm going to sleep until 12 o'clock in the afternoon today yeah. or something. It's not exactly healthy, but I have done it several times. Yeah. That's awesome. And a good answer. I didn't even think about, I, you know, when I saw the question, I was thinking like, oh, you know, sometimes you just lose track of time because you're like, yeah. so like, you know, dialed in. I didn't yeah. think about that. Have you ever had a, a bug get snatched out right from under you because someone else submitted it ahead of you or the clock expired? So you don't see it until or until like you have conversations with other bug hunters in, in the bug bounty space but yeah I've, I've definitely talked to other bug bounty hunters where i've submitted something like uh on a program that's time box so uh, you'll have a program that'll go up for maybe a week or something like that and then you'll submit something and then it'll get duplicated and then you'll end up talking to the researcher on discord or something like that he's a friend of yours or whatever and then he's like oh yeah i did this thing and you're like oh i did that thing too you must have gotten it just like a couple minutes before i did um so that's one. The other one I've had is actually uh, was I found um, a SQL injection on a pretty big e-commerce site, and I was working on it until you know like probably like 3 a.m. or something like that. And I was working on it, working on it, and I was like, well, I'm gonna take some screenshots and submit it. And if I hadn't have submitted, I would have been in big trouble because what happened was the blue teams of the company were completely separate than the red team. They were they were siloed groups as part of the organization. And so I submitted the bug and the blue team saw it in the logs. And so they patched the bug via a virtual WAF or a cloud-based WAF so that I couldn't exploit it anymore. And then the red team and the people who triaged the bug bounty came in and they're like, hey, your bug's not reproducible. We can't reproduce it. And so it's NA or whatever, um, not, a, not applicable basically. And I was really pissed. Luckily I had submitted it early and I had taken various screenshots of table names. So for a mm -hmm. SQL injection, I had pulled out the table names and I'm like, hey, here's data that shows I was there. You need to talk to the blue team and make sure they didn't you know, patch this live or something like that. And sure enough, they had. If I hadn't, if I hadn't have stayed up and I hadn't have taken that screenshot, I would have been out like 510K or something like that. Yeah. So, oh, wow. So, yeah. I mean, this is real. Yeah. 
Oh my God. Well, yeah. So there you go, people. Take good notes, right? I feel like if you're a pen tester, you have to take excellent notes, but screenshots. Yeah. 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 Screenshots. Do you, do you yeah. Have, I know there's a lot of tools out there that will like auto take screenshots or like, mm -hmm. do you have a tool that you recommend? I know it's a little uh, it's particular, but. I mean, I just use Snagit is, is the tool I use for all my screenshots because it's got like all these stamping tools so you can stamp uh, numbers on things. So, like usually when you're telling a company when you're submitting a bug or when you're telling a triager at the bug bounty company, you like want to walk them through how to reproduce your bug really well. And so I like the number stamping. I can be like, step one, do this. Step two, do this, you know, visually. Mm -hmm. And so I, I use Snagit for most of my stuff. All right, there you go. Snagit yeah. uh, for Jason Haddix. I like it. Yeah. Uh, let's do one more kind of AI question. Cause I know you're hot on that. And then, uh, we'll spend a couple minutes just kind of looking forward, uh, with Jason. So, uh, DJ BSEC wants to know, like we, you said chat GPT a lot, right. And that's yeah, where your tool yeah. is and stuff, but Gemini's out there. Copilot yeah. is like, I don't know if you saw Jason, but like Microsoft, like keyboards are going to start having the copilot button. Like mm -hmm. I, right? I have the copilot co button in the bottom of my screen right now. They're forcing it on me. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Me, yeah. yeah, me too. So yeah. have you messed with, well, he says copilot particularly, but I'd love your thoughts on like copilot or Gemini or any other, yeah. like, you know, whatever. Yeah. So I think that copilot in specific is very, very, very power powerful. I think that um, for a couple of reasons, they've been training on secure code data, their integration with GitHub um, in all things, protecting secrets, like people hard coding, API keys and then certificates and things like that. I think that they had the best bo body of, you know, um, training data for secure coding. So I think that Copilot will continue to dominate in this space. I think for general development, I think some of the newer models like Claude uh, are really, really, really good. Um, now, that's not to say that, you know, GPT-4 is a slouch or anything like that, but I really think Copilot is just uh, you know, about 10 to 15% better in the security space mm -hmm. um, than, you know, some other stuff uh, for secure coding. Now, I build offensive tools all the time. So no, normally when I build my offensive tools, I'm doing it in uh, the newest version of Claude or um, or I'm doing it with GPT-4. Um, you're going to run into all kinds of stuff when you use the consumer level subscriptions to these things because they're all trained to be very respectful and very not hackerish, and so they will stop you. So you'll find that, you know, trying to build an offensive tool in Claude is harder to do than in uh, GPT-4 because of their training, their safety training, basically, and their um, prompt that uh, they put that you don't even see, but it's like their AI safety prompt that is behind the scenes working uh, as a firewall. So um, really, it's it's all about, you know. Um, you know, testing everything out and seeing what works for you. But uh, those are the three I, I bounce between. So, yeah. All right. There you go. I, I didn't even know. Like, so Copilot, I haven't really used because it's like embedded in stuff. Whereas like ChatGPT, you can go directly to it and kind of interface yeah. with it. Plus, I'm confused too. Like, I don't know yeah. if you know this. This is just ignorance. But like Microsoft kind of owns a huge piece of ChatGPT. Yes, they do. Yeah. And a huge, I mean, all of Copilot. So like, are yeah. those competing or are they complementary? I think they're, I think that they're, complementary for a lot of stuff so i mean this is a this is a crazy rabbit hole but yeah so um i think that microsoft and this is just my opinion but okay. i think that microsoft disclaimer. is yeah disclaimer this is just an opinion but i think microsoft is poised to be probably one of the most powerful ai companies um in the next century i think i think what if you listen to co-founders who have left OpenAI and how they talk about OpenAI, OpenAI is really good at building models, right? But what Microsoft has is um, an infinitely technical workforce to apply those models to a technology that is worldwide deployed, Windows and everything that goes along with Azure. Mm -hmm. um, and then they also have fantastic security engineering at Microsoft. And they did the smart, smart move right away to partner with OpenAI. So I think that they really have a long-term vision for how to integrate themselves in the scene. They're not gonna, they're not gonna beat OpenAI. No, hardly anyone's gonna even beat OpenAI in model training, right? Yeah. But fine tuning and applying to things that everybody uses and getting it in front of people, um, yeah, that's that's the company. Um, so if you want to know whose stock I bought last week, it's Microsoft. Um, yeah, I, uh, I've got some people in chat who are like, oh, stonk advice. Let's go yeah, <laughs> to yeah. the moon. That's just my opinion, though. Yeah, so, this isn't financial uh, yeah. advice. We're not financial, financial yeah. people. Um, yeah. I, I, I want to ask you, but like this is, again, like um, the conversation's excellent. Have you read this yet? 
Do you know this I book? I haven't read that one. No, it's on my list, but I have not. It's it's sobering. Um, I'm only a, I'm, it's broken into four parts. I've completed the first part, and I'm beginning mm-hmm. I'm beginning the second part. You can see I'm one of the guys who bends pages for bookmarks. Oh yeah, which, no, that's great. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, this is um, this is brilliant. The guy who wrote it is the co-founder of DeepMind, which was like yep. the company ten years ago that was trying to like make human consciousness. And so, yeah. it, it, move, you might want to move this to the up the okay. list, Jason. Right. Uh, it's phenomenal. Yeah. So, yeah, go ahead. So there's one like that too. I don't know if you've read it yet, but um, it's called uh, Not With a Bug, But With a Sticker. Have you read that? I have not, no, but I'll so put it on a, my list. It is an absolutely fantastic book talking about the growth of uh, basically AI red teaming and AI hacking and specifically in image models and how you trick image models to say that, you know, a stop sign is a cat, you know, or, or things like that. So um, it is, it's really good. All right, hold on. I'm going to bring it up on stream so everybody can see it and, and everybody else can uh, benefit from your suggestion and recommendations because that's what you're here. Here it is. Yep. Not yep. with a bug, but with a sticker. All mm-hmm. right. I love it. Visual system, right? Visual AI, different. A lot of people, you know, another thing that like I feel people are getting wrapped around the axle is that, um, you know, it's text input, prompt engineering, but mm-hmm. like there's different modalities. Like it, text oh, yeah. isn't the only one. And, and I think multimodality is starting to take off and it's going to become a little bit more mainstream soon. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the image stuff is, I mean, I have been focusing on text because I think it has the most impact to my day to day, but the image stuff is crazy. I mean, the mid journey Dolly are crazy tools, fine tuning of using those APIs gets better and better. Um, they keep on releasing amazing features. Uh, you know, some even the take-home models that you can run on your own computer these days are just fantastic. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it is a wide wide world of AI and ML um, that that is coming out. I mean, one of the things we haven't even talked about yet is agents, and agents are going to change the world. I think. Oh my so, god, have you seen Chat Dev in that? Yes, I have. Demo? Yes, sir. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. for those who don't know like agents basically instead of having like you interface with one ai model you build an ai model that interfaces with other ai models you built in the chat dev they built an entire video game company and i mean they had social media people devs qa testers when i saw that i was like oh my god like oh my god so one of the former founders of OpenAI did this talk that kind of went unnoticed for about eight months and i picked up on it from another youtuber and i watched it and one of the things he said is that um as far as agi goes right there's this giant race to get artificial general intelligence right now um basically an ai system or a singular ai that can think like a human independently and he was talking about how uh agents are the way to the future it will not be a single model that comes out that's agi it will be a collection of small little agents who are really good at one thing Mm -hmm. who are over you know oversaw by one kind of um overseer bot and this collection together will have artificial general intelligence and so this was a co-founder that left OpenAI who talked about this and the really cool thing about it is in his talk he talked about um again that the model companies you're never going to be able to catch up to them in training a model in my house right like my gaming pc is not going to be able to train a model but what he talked about is like everybody can build ai agents um with new tools that are coming out and so it might be someone in their garage that builds agi if agents are the way to get to agi and it was really fascinating yeah that does sound interesting and and it it really is i i actually saw there's a guy uh, he's not a cyber guy he's not a tech guy i think his name's peter shapiro don't quote me on that but he has he does a youtube thing he's a developer uh he does data science stuff anyways he actually like he didn't he made like the theory of it he didn't make the bots themselves yet or the agents, but he had this entire taxonomy of like basically an org structure. And yeah. there was like a board that managed that. But the yep. thing is because it's AI, his board had Socrates, Plato, like he, you can have, it doesn't have to yeah. be like someone alive today. It could be anyone. Oh yeah. And, uh, yeah, for sure. For sure. So whew. yeah. All right. Well, let's, no, we're, let's... we're down, we're down the rabbit hole now. It's crazy. <laughs> I know. Well, yeah. let, let's, let's, let's pull up from it and, and leave on a really positive note. So Jason, I know you've got your classes coming up. You've got talks coming up. Um, you know, I guess where can people connect with you and where should people like, what are you like looking forward to that you want people to know about coming up here soon? Yeah, I think, I think really the AI class is my deep love right now. So, um, you know, I'll be doing some free talks 
um, that are just a snippet of that called Red, Blue, Purple AI, the talk edition. And so that'll be what I give it most of the cons I'm going to coming up. Um, and then again in uh, June, the next version of the Bug Hunters Methodology Live. So really my training is where my passion and most of my focus is right now. Um, but if you want to hit me up and just talk about any of this stuff, like I'm on Twitter, uh, which is, or X, sorry, at Jay Haddix, yep. and uh, you can DM me and, and just hit me up there. I'm also on LinkedIn. Um, I'm doing a whole bunch of projects with all kinds of people. So, yeah. Yeah. So I'm showing it on stream right now. If you're kind of listening, but you're in the other room cooking dinner or something, I, like we're showing the LinkedIn, we're showing the Twitter, we're showing the um, the course that he's doing. And I, I'll put these links in the uh, show description. I, I don't always go back and put them, but like it's too important uh, mm -hmm. to not share them with everybody. Uh, there's, a, there's a secret on my Twitter. If you go back to the Twitter and look at today's post uh, on my newsletter, if you scroll down a little bit, Mm -hmm. A little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Okay, so that one, there's a reply to that one, and there's a code there. If you can crack the code, uh, read what it says, and you can get a free ticket to, uh, you might be able to get a free ticket to the class. So. Holy crap. Okay, there you go, people. I'm going to drop this. Uh, can you, how do you, of course, I suck at Twitter. Like, how no, do you, good. how do you, oh, here we go. There you I'm go. Gonna, yeah. I'm going to drop the uh, the post in chat right now. It's This is an official um Basically, CTF from Jason to you, crack the first comment and potentially get into the class yeah. uh, for free. That's an awesome. And just a reminder, I mean, whether this uh, motivates you or not, I will be in the June 26th, June 27th class uh, coming up here. It's a Wednesday, Thursday. It could impact the Simply Cyber Live, but we'll get that sorted out when it comes around. But super pumped. Uh, James McQuiggan uh, with a super chat. Let me bring that up on stage really quickly. James says... Thanks, James, for the super chat. Thanks for your info today, Jason. Great books mentioned. Love the world of A. So much more to come. James Thanks, is on James. the uh, yeah. James is on the talk circuit too. Uh, you probably bump into him uh, along I the bet. way. <laughs> All right, guys. So tons of information. Uh, Jason Haddix has been our our guest today. Uh, Jason, thank you for uh, allowing us to go over a few minutes. Thank you so much for coming uh, and just dropping knowledge bomb, knowledge bomb, knowledge bomb, knowledge bomb, and no then problem. going down an AI hole with us. Um, Really, really genuinely appreciate it. Thank you. Hopefully I'll come back again. It'd be nice. Yeah. Well, you're always invited. Chat, thank you so much for your engagement, your wonderful questions. You guys straight crushed it. I'm Jerry from Simply Cyber. Until next time, stay secure. If you enjoyed that content, keep the cybersecurity train going by connecting with the other Simply Cyber community resources. We have the Discord server that's lively and always keeps the conversation going. You can connect with me directly on LinkedIn. And also every single weekday morning on the Simply Cyber channel, we're doing live daily cyber threat briefings, 8 a.m. Eastern time, as well as Thursday at 4.30 p.m. We're doing live stream interviews with industry experts, and we produce videos that we push out every Wednesday morning. 